I'm sure you've heard of Red Rooms in the past, via exploring the surface web or watching YouTube videos of people who scroll through the dark net. Now, I want to start by saying that not all of the dark net is bad, and in fact, a lot of people make an honest living there by, well, being online vendors. To clarify, the dark net and the deep web should be considered two different sections of the internet. The dark net, in particular, is where most of the illegal stuff happens. Fake IDs, drugs, weapons, human trafficking, and so on. By contrast, the deep web is mainly the unindexed files of anarchists, governments, and occultists. I think that there is a lot of merit to the deep web, and that's what draws me to its mystery because, well, I never know what's real and what isn't. Now, for me, to get into this next part is a little difficult, just because I have to look back on something I wish I could unsee. I know a little bit about how to access and be safe on the dark net, but I often disregard the safety because I usually don't plan on buying anything, and so, well, often I just browse. It's hard to start browsing because you never know what you're going to find, and it's endless clicking of link after link, and waiting for the Tor browser to stop dragging its feet and load the sites. Yes, you have to be patient though, and I can't say that I am. I either lose interest in what I'm doing, or I already know that it's going to be a dead link to a mirror site anyway, and not the real thing. Well, let's get into the story anyway. It was a typical browsing session for me. I get into these moods where my morbid curiosity pushes me beyond my limits on the deep web. A link after link, and well, I'd found a message board. It was pretty big, and it showed that there were a total of 2,000 members online, all talking about different things. At first I was just ghosting the conversations, reading about corrupt politicians, the sex trade, people talking about smuggling other people from border to border for cash. I got bored after an hour or so of just reading, and I figured it was a good time for me to leave. I moved my cursor over to the edge of the window to click out. I clicked and clicked, but nothing happened. Now, I've read stories about people whose lives have been completely ruined by being rude to the people in these parts of the internet, so I told myself that whatever happened, I wouldn't shoot down anyone, mainly out of fear. Oh, a side note, horror is my thing. I love the intensity, and I love reading as if I'm living out the experience. It gives me a chance to feel the emotions of the person that really experienced what happened. Anyway, back to the story. Sorry, I'm rambling. My computer froze, and I couldn't do anything, so I sat and waited. Well, I grabbed food because well, I had time to kill. I was about to kill my laptop and call it a night when a small black box popped up on my screen. A little text box, only a few inches in length and height, popped up. An image of a key made out of white pixels, and some text that read out my computer's IP address. I couldn't type into the box, but it allowed for me to click on the key. I was brought to an all-black screen that was separated into two halves. On the left, there was a chat. It was filled with people talking about an event that was going to be taking place soon. There wasn't even a countdown on the right side. As I was scrolling through the chat, I was, well, just reading and watching. A prompt appeared for me to input a username. My guess is that one of the admins of the site wanted me to get more involved. In fact, the chat started talking to me specifically. It was small talk and then mainly asking me to change the name of myself in the chat. I looked down at the prompt and typed in my middle name. <laughs> I left it short and sweet. Matt. My middle name is Matthew, but spelling that out a hundred times isn't fun, and I think Matt <laughs> sounds cooler. I hit enter, and a new text appeared in the chat. Anon12560, name change. Matt. The chat started going, and I was getting more involved with talking to these people. Everyone was excited, and even I was getting to that point. 
The timer on the right side of the screen was now down to about a minute or so. Everyone was settling down in the chat, and many new options began to appear on the screen. There were little boxes that you could input prices into, as if you were bidding on eBay. And the timer hit zero. The numbers went away, and a video started. It was shitty quality, but everyone was ecstatic. It looked like the curtains for a play were being moved apart. A single man wearing a mask stood in front of the camera and said, Welcome to the lion's den. The man continued to thank all the patrons who'd made all of this possible, and then he continued over to the right. He gestured, and the camera panned over. There were three people in chairs, all of them appearing to be drugged, their heads limp and breathing unsteadily. I was ready to leave at this point, but I felt that if I tried to exit out again, someone would know, so I stayed. I stayed, and I watched, as one by one, those three people were tortured and killed. It looked like a family, a middle-aged man, middle-aged woman, and a child. I was disgusted. I watched in horror as donations flooded in, and the first suggestion took place. The masked man took the middle-aged man over to a table and stuck his hand into this contraption that attached itself to his nails and had blades over each finger. The masked man asked if he should make things interesting. The chat went wild, and more donations were pouring in. This was the craziest thing I'd ever watched, and I couldn't stop watching it either. I was in awe. Now, I'd heard about these things, but I didn't think I would ever weasel my way into a freaking red room. The masked man began to interrogate the man, saying that if he wasn't truthful, then he would lose some things. The stressed, okay, okay, was followed by sobbing. The question started out easy, but the man fell apart when he asked if he'd ever cheated on his wife. The man attached to this weird mechanism looked away and said no. Now the host of the show walked around the table clapping his hands. He spoke one word. Liar! And pressed a button on the machine the man's hand was in. And then came the screams. The horrible, horrible screams. The man's hand now mutilated in an instant. The machine tore out his nails, then cut off his fingers at the middle joint. The host even gave an EpiPen to keep him conscious. He grabbed the man's head and made him look into the camera. Any others want to donate? More money being poured into these people's sick and twisted fantasies. The man was cut, shot, and hung, before being skinned and sent off. I say sent off, but they just cut the rope and left the lifeless, bloodied lump of flesh sit on the floor. God, it was a horrific way to go. And I not only watched most of it, I didn't feel phased. The wife was next. The donations continued, and for this premium, they stripped her of her clothes before slowly cutting her up with a rusty kitchen knife. She was in utter agony, and these people got off on this shit. She was bloodied up, now strapped to a table, while they sawed her limbs off. My heart was pounding. My heart is pounding now as I write this. This happened years ago, and I'm still getting anxious about the whole experience. That wasn't even the worst of it. They still had the child. I was sick. I was literally feeling physically sick from watching the whole ordeal with the wife, and I could only imagine how infinitely worse it was going to be for their little girl. The daughter had been conscious for over an hour. 
not recognizing the lifeless lump on the floor only a few feet away. She cried for her father, shouting at the top of her lungs, saying that her dad was gonna hurt them if they touched her or her mom anymore. That broke my heart. At that moment I was scared, and I can say that I haven't been the same since. I've had nightmares, but that, that's a story for another time. Thinking about the tragic fate the daughter went through still makes me physically ill. The masked man introduced her as the closing act for the night, and asked again for more money. It came through, ten times the amount of the parents. It was sickening. This part is seared into my brain, and I'm going to warn you, this is by far the most graphic thing I've ever experienced. The man went to work on the girl, abusing her before ultimately killing her, just like he'd done with the mother before. The man took the same rusty knife he'd used on the mother to further mutilate the child. Shrieks of embarrassment and pain were cut short when the child passed out from the pain. Oh, we can fix that, ladies and gentlemen, the man said with a ghostly low voice. He walked into a corner of the room that was hidden to the viewers behind the camera and re-emerged with a large cast iron rod that was red hot from sitting in a fireplace or something. Ugh, he burned that little girl everywhere the people asked before shoving the rod down the child's throat, thus ending the pain and giving her a release that she'd probably wish for since she last saw her mother alive. The man continued to do what the patrons asked for a little while longer, before bringing the show to a close. The window closed out on its own, and all that was left was a chat box that said, Until next time, my friends. And that's my story. I threw out that computer, and since then, haven't really gone and searched for anything else like that. Thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. 